Wow, it is bright out. Welcome back, guys. Hey, good morning, Hank. It's a beautiful morning. It's gonna be 81 degrees today. Got a little bit of a sinus thing going on, so excuse the uh, Donald Duck, but I wanna give you an update on the house, kind of explain what's going on with the house. Nothing's, nothing's wrong, but uh, just kind of an in-between stage where it's a bunch of little punch list items, some final inspections before we can start insulating and drywall. So I guess let's start out here. Chelsea went around and this is Prosico Argard. This is a fantastic product for like a difficult spot where you're going from like a wood product to a concrete. This stuff is tenacious. It is so sticky. It's obviously kind of a mess. This whole area is getting cultured stone. The whole front's getting cultured stone. So I told her, just slop it on, it doesn't matter, I want a good coat. Um, we still have some more to do on the house, but that can come later. That's really for air sealing and for bugs. So if we just get to it kind of before siding, that's all that I really care about. <clears throat> Let's go inside, show you guys a few things. So I got the electrical panel. I just need to hook up one wire, but it, uh, it came out pretty nice. Got everything nice and straight. All of the things are labeled so I can label my panel nicely. So happy with how that turned out. I had to move the plumbing. Code requires space around your panel so that if you're working on your panel and you get a surge or something, you can back away without hitting anything. So I ran my pipes over the top, which was out of that clearance zone, but I wasn't even thinking. I wish one of you guys would have called me out on it. The water pipes were above the electrical panel. So if there was a leak or something, it would be dripping and it would be a mess because water and electricity are not friends. Man, there are just so many little punch list items, but they should be all wrapped up today. This is a big one. <clears throat> we got the pocket doors in. So this can finally visualize the rooms a little better. These were two by four pocket doors, but I didn't want to special order the two by six ones. So I just furred these out with two layers of half inch OSB. That way they're nice and flush with the studs and then drywall will go over top of them. Because we're a slab on grade, these were meant to be screwed into your subfloor, which would typically be wood. I didn't like the play in them, so I just took this one inch by one inch angled aluminum, drilled holes in it, tap conned into my floor. On these wood ones, I didn't fasten them to the door because they're on both sides, so it can't go anywhere. But you can see over here, this one took a little more thinking because I had these screws popping out. So I got a nice flush under here. The drywall will come down. And then when we're doing the tiling, the mortar bed will just go over this and it won't be an issue. All right, next, this is what we were really working on the past few weeks. So these are the recessed ceiling cassettes from LG. Super happy with how these, uh, I think, are going to turn out. It was a little complicated, let me show you. So I had to get this uh, threaded rod. This is how you hang them. That way you can adjust the height and get it perfectly level. This is just a access panel. I still need to wire these. And then there's gonna be a big grate that'll go on. That way it's flush on the wall. A lot of times mini splits have the registers hanging on the wall, which is fine. It's just, a, it's just an aesthetic thing. We didn't really like the look of it. It looks a little too industrial for our house. So this way we will have AC primarily because it's in the ceiling and heat rises. Our floor is our heat and again, heat rises. So that should be good for both spectrums of heating and cooling. But if for any reason the floor ever fails, these also have heating capabilities so we can heat with them. So that was a super nice insurance just in case something ever happens with the floor. We aren't gonna have to do a ton of work to get heat back in here. So we have one in the master bedroom, one in this main living room. These are some bigger units. I think they're 12,000 BTUs. And then we have a smaller 9,000 BTU in each bedroom. So one right there, one right there and one in there. This here is the drain line. These units condensate and they have a pump in them that will pump the condensate out. I plumbed it in one inch PVC all the way to my vent stacks. Oh, I can't walk through the walls anymore. Let me show you over here. There we go. So I, I plumbed it to my vent stack, insulated it with the rubber insulation, the nicer stuff. That way it won't ever drip through the ceiling. And then these are called line sets. They go outside to an outdoor unit. I'll show you now. 
Look at all that insulation. That is a video coming soon. So this is the unit for those two 12,000. I believe this is a 30,000 BTU unit. So if we ever wanted to add one, we could always add another head to this system. I did a mount to the wall. That way I can just side around it. And then this will get nailed to the sheathing, flashed, side around that. And then this will get wrapped with a protective tape or something to clean that up because that looks like garbage. I ripped it a little bit, getting it all the way out here. The other one is on the other side of the house and it is, it was heavy. It was not easy lifting it up there, but I got it up and that's for the three 9,000 units. So you can see it's quite a bit bigger. I'm um, not really sure the difference. I don't know anything about these things with the exception of refrigerant gets pumped through these and it extracts or lets the heat out. So those are all the line sets coming out there. I wanted a nice clean install. A lot of times you'll see them coming way down and you'll have these huge line hide things. But I think that will look uh, pretty clean. Just need an electrical disconnect there. So that's pretty much the finished look. Pretty clean. If we ever have any issues, we can just pop out through the attic and come back down to the unit if the heads ever fail. Concrete is back in full swing and I've been working every day so we haven't had too much time to work on the house because we gotta pay for this house. There's no sense in working on the house if we don't have any money to put towards it. So the goal is to finish up those few punch list items this weekend, get inspection, insulate ourselves, and then I, I made a date for myself next Friday is when drywall is being delivered. So I don't really have a choice. I have to figure out how to get it done by then. This is gonna be a massive drywall project. I think they said like 10 to 15 days, depending on the temperatures, because the mud has to cure in between sand and coats. We did not want to do the drywall. We said no to roofing and no to drywall. We'll handle everything else. But those two things were just out of our wheelhouse and just, we've done a little bit of drywall before and it is a great recipe for a argument or marriage counseling. It's gonna to totally transform the look of this house. We're super excited. I think I'm gonna start the day though with some mowing. This is getting ridiculous. I figured it'd be a little bit before we'd need to, but you can see how long. It's about seven to eight inches in a lot of spots. So let's, uh, let's get the mower fired up, see, uh, see if there's any rat's nests in it, and get this yard mowed. I moved this thing in here, I think it was about December, maybe January. So hopefully she will start. We've had this thing for about three years now. And we've kind of used it more of like a brush hog because we've been on rough properties. Our first property that failed was terrible. That was about, I think it was about eight, nine acres that Chelsea would mow with this thing. And this will be eventually about nine acres of mowing. So we're definitely gonna need to upgrade a 60 inch mower would take like five to six hours a week and that's just not gonna happen. But for now, it is more than good enough. Watch out, buddy. Alrighty, that worked out pretty well. Definitely need a spring tune-up on the mower. That'll be a video soon. If you look at the uh, heads of your grass, if you notice it's ripped kind of like that, that means your blades are dull and you need to sharpen them. Not only for the look, but also the health of your lawn. Don't spend money on overseeding and fertilizing and stuff if you're not going to cut it properly because you're damaging the grass 
and you're really stopping the growth. So you want a nice clean cut. It should look more like a shear than that frayed end. Same thing with weed whipping. That's why you try to kind of minimize how much weed whipping you have to do because it's not healthy for the lawn. So if you don't care, that's totally fine. But if you care about your lawn, definitely make sure you have sharp blades. Hopefully this sinus, whatever is going on, passes soon because it's really annoying. Thank you guys for watching this quick video and we'll see you on the next one. Alrighty boys, what do you say we get back to work? We don't have time to mow. <laughs> see you guys.